Welcome to Learn Biology and in our last video we were discussing natural selection and how it explains evolution. We went through uh, Charles Darwin and how he studied the uh, finches and discovered the different beaks and their usefulness in eating specific foods and how these variations increase the chances of survival in the uh, population of finches. We also uh, explained how natural selection occurs with random mutations and then the environment influences which organisms survive and we also went through the standard term survival of the fittest now we're discussing various types of various types of natural selection there are several types of uh, natural selections but we're going to explain the three most common types of natural selection. So the first one is known as stabilizing natural selection. So stabilizing selection. And before we even go on to explain what it is, we have to say that this is the most common type of natural selection, the most common natural selection we see in nature. And what this means is that the averages in a population are most likely to survive and we'll provide an example in a second but just to explain this graph right here if you look below we see this graph uh, labeled stabilizing selection and what this graph is showing is the survival rate based on the traits selected for by natural selection so this right here will always be the average in a graph so this center line and these right here these lower corners will always be the extremes and this will all make better sense when we provide an example so our example here we have these seeds in a specific environment in the local forest you could say and the special seeds require a beak that can specifically open the shell now in this example large birds which have large beaks will break the seeds and lose the food within birds with small beaks cannot break the seed causing them not to be able to get the food within. So in this example, the average size beak, a beak that is not too large or not too small, will be selected for by nature. So the average beak is what will be able to open these seeds. And this is what stabilizing selection is saying, that the average population, birds with the average size beak, are most likely to survive based on the specific environment where only these seeds are available. So now the next type of natural selection is directional selection. And if we just take a look at the word directional, we can say that it goes in one specific direction, meaning directional. So that's just an easy way to remember what directional selection is. It has one direction. And what this means is again let's take a look at the graph below. Here is the standard curve. This is what we saw earlier in the previous example right here in stabilizing selection. That is the standard curve. If we look at the directional selection curve we'll notice that it has moved towards the right and by moving towards the right again this is one extreme so one extreme this is the second extreme since now we have moved in the right direction so this is the second extreme and what directional selection says is that the averages and the other extremes are not likely to survive so meaning that only one extreme will survive longer and in an example we'll have the 
saber-toothed cat. Uh, people call it the saber-toothed tiger, but its actual name is the saber-toothed cat. And if we look at these teeth of the saber-toothed cat, we see how long they are. And this was an evolutionary trait, and in each generation, these teeth continued to grow longer. And so why is this? Why did the teeth continue to grow longer? Well, these longer teeth allow the saber-toothed cat to grasp onto the prey and puncture its jugular vein, which allows it to kill the organism faster. So it made them a better predator. So this better predator, evolution continued to select for these large teeth. So these large teeth continue to get longer and longer in each generation. And this is exactly what directional selection means, that this one extreme, these, this long teeth, so these long teeth were selected for because they increased the chances of survival. So directional selection selects one extreme. These large teeth were an extreme trait which increased the chances of survival. The only downside of directional selection is that it may lead to extinction. So may lead to extinction. Scientists believe this is one of the several theories of why these, uh, these saber-toothed cats went extinct one of the theories is that its teeth grew so long that it could not shut its jaw. And uh, this is why directional selection may lead to extinction, because the teeth never stop growing and then causes issues. The next type of uh, natural selection is disruptive selection. And if we take a look at the graph, we can see right here that the extremes so extreme are selected for we see that the chances of survival is greatest in the extremes and the the average is not ha uh, have a large chance of survival so disruptive selection is a type of natural selection in which extremes are selected for survival and the average is least likely to survive. We'll use the example of the pepper moth which changed its wing color in England's Industrial Revolution. During the England's Industrial Revolution the pepper moth's wings changed colors based on the amount of pollution in the air before the Industrial Revolution. So before the Industrial Revolution, the pepper moth had this white color which faded into the trees. So it was camouflaged and was likely to survive. So likely to survive because its wings were the camouflage color of the trees. After pollution began to increase, the pepper moth wings began to turn dark color, come almost completely black. And also, the tree colors were turning dark because they were absorbing the pollution. So the trees were turning dark and the pepper moths were turning dark. Again, they were likely to survive because they were camouflaged. So likely survival. Now what happened before and after? In each situation, the extremes were selected for. Meaning when there was no pollution, the white pepper moth was selected for. When there was too much pollution, the black pepper moth was selected for. So disruptive selection is disruptive because the extremes are selected for in each time period. So thank you for watching Learn Biology and we'll see you next time.